If thou art offended by words such as and mother don't keep listening. Hey, welcome to episode three of the Pinball Party Podcast. Third time's a charm. Or, uh, third wheel. Uh, three's a crowd. Eh? Or maybe three strikes you're out. Let's hope for, uh, third time's a charm. My name's Jason. I've been the one welcoming you for the last, I don't know, five to ten seconds. We got a good show today. I'm happy to talk about a local place that just opened up. Good place to play pinball. We'll talk about a little breaking news. Some of it very breaking. A little follow-up on last time. And last but not least, review the next game that I've bought. So, without further ado, let's go. Alright, first and foremost, I'd like to thank those who reached out, all the kind words, I'm glad you're liking it, I'm liking it, I'm having a good time. You know, for me, it's a, a good break away from music, I guess not necessarily audio, but, you know, we're going back to record another album uh, early November at Black and Bloom Studios in Denver, Colorado, and a big, juicy shout out to Kyle and Chris fantastic sound engineers to work with. Anyone who's thinking of recording in the Denver, Colorado area what could do much worse than recording at Black and Bloom Studios. They've had some pretty large names there in the, the rock, the punk rock uh, genre. Uh, one of the hugest names they've had. Oh, jeez. Uh, they're called Neon Dale? Oh, they're so good. I take the long road back I mean, maybe not the singer, songwriter, and guitarist, but everyone else is fantastic. Catchy as hell. All that. But in all seriousness, it's, yeah, a little less pressure to do this kind of thing. And I'm, I'm, I love to talk about a fantastic hobby that we all share together. And that hobby is pinball. And interrupting your episode three, I come with some breaking news from Stern Electronics. They've announced their next game. And that game is Seven, based on the movie by David Fincher, starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, about the seven deadly sins, and man, I mean, I, I came out of left field, but I am excited, uh, you know, knowing that they're going to do about all the seven deadly sins. It's a little, you know, mature for Stern, a little, uh, you know, what? What's that? The what? It is? Oh, I thought that was a typo. Oh, that makes more sense. No, yeah, no, I'm recording. Ah, shit. Breaking news from Stern Electronics. They've announced their latest game, 007, based on the franchise of Bond, James Bond himself. And to be honest, there's not a lot to say about it, just little bits. It's set to be released next Tuesday, the 13th, uh, to the public at 10 a.m., Apparently the dealers slash distributors get a little sneak preview a couple hours ahead of time. And from, you know, the email I got from Stern Insider and all the pin side news and gossip, you know, combing through the BS, it seems like the, the, the closest things to facts we have, aside from it being released on Tuesday, they'll probably start with the pros per usual, but the email itself, the Insider email actually referenced LEs if you want to buy them direct. Beyond the announcement... We are pretty sure that there's going to be a price increase. Now, I'm not sure if that's $1, dollars $100, $200, $500, 1000 Please, no. But, yeah, just rumors. So, again, maybe this will all be, you know, by the time you hear this, corrected and more information. But also another rumor 
uh, is that, I guess, slash confirmation that it's going to be the Sean Connery age of Bond films. Um, beyond that, I guess I, I'm not sure. All I have is, is gone is, is the rumors. All we can really say for sure is that the next game is 007. For me personally, that theme does very little, if not nothing at all. Never been a giant Bond fan. I mean, it's fine. Now, if it was based on just the N64 game, Goldeneye, that would draw me in a lot stronger. It wouldn't sell me on it, but I'd be much more curious. Yeah, overall, Bond, I don't have much to say on. I don't have history with it. I've seen some of the movies. I take them or leave them. I see them if it's just uh, nothing else to see. But anyway, there goes my bullshit on Back to the Future or He-Man. Or I was going to talk about Jaws today, but yeah, it's for another show. Here's hoping for those three pins to be announced, but for all those James Bond heads out there, I guess, what does the fandom call you guys? Just James Bond fans. I'm, I'm happy for you. I think it's a very respectable theme. I think a lot of people will be happy. And I guess one more little rumor or hope is that it's a Gomez game, which I, you know, I actually going to talk about in a little bit, but Gomez knows what he's doing. So here's hoping to a great game by hopefully Gomez and the Stern team. At least now we know what we're dealing with. Back to your regular scheduled programming. One quick follow-up to last week before we talk about a new place to play pinball in Wisconsin. A little update on the TNA spooky scandal, a.k.a. will you please pay us $9,000 for TNA 2.0? Get fucked! No! Uh, and the short update is this. Those 250 are not sold out. You can still buy them. That gives me just a glimmer of hope of those in this community. There's some good left in this world. And hopefully a subtle message of we're not that hard up for total nuclear annihilation. But just to reiterate, again, I wish nothing but the best for Spooky. In fact, I'm rooting for them. I want them to succeed and that's why this just trips my trigger so much. Oh, you sons of bitches! I don't want to give you $9,000. Come on, man. Let me give you money. Just not that much. And speaking of giving places in Wisconsin some money, I would like to formally welcome from, I guess, just this podcast, very grandiose of me, a big welcome to Reboot Social. Reboot Social opened up this weekend in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It is a bar, cade, bowling alley, pinball, pool, all that kind of stuff in one. And while we've had some of those in the past, this one seems to actually take itself very seriously. Well, not in like a Daniel Day-Lewis, there will be blood, serious. But as in, they put a lot of money into it, prepared quite a bit, I think got the right stock of games, both arcade and pinball, uh, but let, let me walk you through, I guess, my day there yesterday. Well, I pull up in my Mazda CX-5, as I do, and as I approach, some rando asks, are you wearing a pickle hat? In fact, I was wearing a Vlasic pickle hat. I say, yes, I am. He said, that, that's awesome. I said, I know. And I walked in, and first thing is I saw this very nice bar, very clean, uh, a few waitresses, a couple waiters, a bartender. I saw some pinball machines in the back. I could tell right away, all right, we got some new sterns. Uh, I take it all in. I walk up to the machine, see that there's no bill validators or credit cards. I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Let me go find out what the what the sitch is here. I couldn't find a, a coin machine anywhere. So like, all right, uh, I asked one of the, the ladies, hey, you know, what's the scoop here? It's my first time. How, how do we pay for these things? Is it just, you know, quarters, it looks like? Yeah, there's a, a coin machine downstairs. There's some more pinball machines down there. And I'm like, okay, great, cool. So I show myself downstairs, take a right, see the coin machine. And it, 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 they spell coin T-O-K-E-N. Like that, that says token. Tokens? What? Okay. Uh, tokens? Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to 1990, I suppose. Uh, and not only are they tokens, it's three for a dollar. Not four. Their math is fantastic, apparently. So, whatever, okay. I put in a dollar, get my three tokens. They literally just look like quarters. But they say... Uh, what do they say on it? Let me grab one. They say... 
Uh, oh, they do say reboot social on them. Actually, that's pretty sweet. Uh, one side is reboot social. The other side is the the power symbol, like the, the the circle with the little line through it. You'd recognize it, the power symbol on any sort of electronic. And and they're actually pretty, you know, the, the same weighty as a quarter. Like, these are some expensive tokens. I'd say instead of spending so much money creating these actually heavy-duty tokens, just use quarters. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey, whatever. Not a big deal. I get my tokens. I look at the machines downstairs. Great, we have another just big lineup. And, uh, you know, the first game I actually played was uh, X-Men Pro. Um, I've, I've wanted to in a while, and hey, that was it. But let me let me read the games, actually, that they had there. Because for Eau Claire, I think it was pretty impressive. All right, here we go. These are all pros, by the way. Uh, Rush, Avengers, Mandalorian, Star Wars, Godzilla. You know, those are the stern pros upstairs. Downstairs, we had Medieval Madness, OG, uh, Kiss, Rick and Morty, which actually surprised me. You know, all the newer ones upstairs, and then suddenly downstairs, there's a Rick and Morty. X-Men Pro, as I mentioned. Adam's Family, surprise. Uh, South Park, Space Jam? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Attack from Mars, original, I think. And then a Star Trek Pro. What did I do? Well, I played X-Men Pro first. Cracked it twice. I think, yeah, I had two credits. I played another one. Cracked it again. I was like, okay. Uh, and just kind of left it, you know. Did the baller thing and left my credits for someone else. No big deal. And then uh, went upstairs. I actually wanted to spend, I think, most of my time on Rush. So what did I do? Well, I played two games. Made that machine my bitch. Grandmastered it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, appreciate it. Yeah. Not a big deal. Just a Sunday. And as a gentleman, I, I left the two credits in there for the next batter up. After that, I made my way back downstairs and thought, you know, I, you know, for those who have listened to the first episode, I love Star Trek. I have an Ellie at home. And I haven't played a pro in so long. I figured, why not just play a pro there? It's just, you know, compare, contrast. It's been a while. Like, whatever, I'll just play it. And uh, I played it, and I grandmastered that son of a bitch as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, no. Hey, settle down. Watch it, man. Whoa. Hey, man, it's just a game. Sit down low. Hey, man. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. a little rough but overall great time reboot social eau claire wisconsin check it out let's just keep continuing this wisconsin theme and talk about how more money has been moved around wisconsin in my pinball life i suppose we're about to get to my review of deadpool the third game that i owned but before we do i realized last week i didn't mention how i acquired lord of the rings i've heard others express interest in you know, hearing the mini story on how some acquire games, because uh, foreshadowing, there are some interesting stories ahead, uh, to say the least, on some of these. But for Lord of the Rings, it was my second game, but originally it was my grail theme, and, and still is to a certain extent. I didn't really care about keeping two pinball machines, so I sold Star Trek Pro, I'm sure either at even or a $100 loss or gain, just you know, I'd like to sell right in the meat of where I bought it at. I saw Lord of the Rings for sale in Madison, Wisconsin, not on Pinside, not on Craigslist, not on Facebook, but on a website called WisconsinPinball.net. WisconsinPinball.net is another forum slash, well, website forum, which is, you guessed it, all about pinball. There is uh, general news, there's general just talk of the day, there's buy, sell, exactly what you'd think. A mini Pinside. Uh, someone on there listed a Lord of the Rings for $5,900, and I sent him a message within 30 seconds. Yes, I'll take it, and went down there. I at least knew this time you use cardboard to get in the 
car, you use shrink wrap to wrap the head down, and, you know, this guy was moving to Florida, selling off his collection. It was a home-use-only Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, that's it. I picked it up, took it home, and you heard the review last week. So let's move on to the review of the day, the review of the pod, the review of the cast, and that is Mr. Chimichanga himself, Mr. Ryan Reynolds, Mr. All Red with a Couple Eyes, Mr. Is he in X-Men? Is he in Marvel? What is he? I'm talking about Deadpool. Well, there's actually a little more to the story on getting Deadpool. Because when I had Lord of the Rings, I personally was cool with that. Uh, I'm, I'm done with pinball. I just want Lord of the Rings. It's a theme that resonates to me. I enjoyed tinkering with it. I didn't go on pin side anymore, any of that. However, I would say a month after getting Lord of the Rings, life happened. Uh, <laughs> without getting more into it, it was a, a good decision to actually sell that game and use the money um, for, for, for life things. So I actually took, uh, I think it was about a year and a half break from pinball altogether. And, you know, life kept happening as it does and came back to a point where monetarily it was cool to waste money on a heavy ass machine again. And at this point, I was no longer doing the pin side daily stuff or I didn't have Craigslist alerts or any of that. So I was, I was out of the game. I didn't know... You know, I, well, I was like, well, I'll get a Lord of the Rings again, I guess. But I wanted to kind of, you know, find out the lay of the land. And it came pretty apparent fast that the game that I saw previews of right when I sold Lord of the Rings, which was, I don't know if it was Whitewood or it was just kind of sketches of, of, of Deadpool. When I came back, Deadpool was apparently good. It blew me away, even thinking that it would be. Nothing against a character. I, you know, I'm a comic fan and all that, but it just... You know, I remember when I stopped, there was a lot of controversy around it, and I won't get into that. But anyway, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just look for uh, a Deadpool or a Lord of the Rings again or a Star Trek. I don't know. Uh, and what ended up happening was in Minneapolis, there was a Deadpool at a good price, a Deadpool Pro. Uh, shout out to Brobra in Minneapolis. Uh, I saw his posting, shot him an offer. He accepted, and I went out there. And this was my first interaction with him. I've had uh, many. Uh, great guy to do business with. I show up, and it was a game just like the previous two I'd never played in real life. I didn't know what to expect other than the reviews were good, and there was a lot of red. Uh, I got there, saw his collection, learned a little bit mo more of what he does. It was pretty interesting. Tested the game, flipped it a couple times, but again, like I'm like, I don't know. I've never played this. Is it working? I guess. Great. Let let's take her home. I took it home. So my first game after a couple year break was Deadpool Pro. Let's just go right into my personal review. This one, I want to, uh, we're still going to go through the same, you know, metrics as, as the last two times. We're going to go through theme and gameplay and rules, visuals, and audio. And then my overall kind of personal opinion, aside from how numerically it pans out. My first thoughts on Deadpool. I... This was my first Spike 2 game, so my very first thoughts were, holy shit, it sounds good. It, it it doesn't sound terrible anymore. Not only does it sound good, the animations, you know, maybe I was spoiled, uh, hindsight, the animations were phenomenal. I remember on Lord of the Rings, my biggest, not my biggest complaint, which was the audio quality, but my was my next mod was going to be a color DMD because I thought that would be a, a great uplift to that game. But on Deadpool holy shit, it just looked great. It sounded great. It was just a rock and roll vibe. I was all in like, okay, this is, this is cool. I'm glad, you know, I kind of bought this without even thinking and, 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 and let's go. And my overall first impression was just thematically cool. Sounds great. This is a new era of pinball, similar to how I felt when I first got Star Trek Pro. Like this is a, this is a new game, uh, pun intended, but let's, uh, let's get right into the categories. Theme. Theme on Deadpool. I have yet to meet someone in my real life adventures that is a diehard Deadpool fan. I have a lot of comic book friends, and I myself am a comic book person. When I say comic book friends, I guess what I actually mean is in the industry. 
either doing graphic design in a comic book manner or literally make comic books. They're usually, you know, all I grew up on uh, Jack Kirby or early Spider-Man, uh, early Conan, things like that, early Thor. Deadpool is always just like, yeah, he's great. He's fine. I'll always take him. And that's basically how I feel about Deadpool. The movies, uh, I think, are great. So the theme, you know, I just don't really have much to say on it other than that just fits in a perfect seven. It's good. It's not bad. Does it scream pinball to me, the theme? Eh, no, but it's fine. There's much worse. And there's some better. Gameplay. Gameplay, I am going to give... Well, I'll give a number, but some of this corresponds with... Um, hmm, you know, we're at a crossroads here, I guess, uh, of how I describe this. I guess I've skipped over it in the first two reviews. I've owned this game more than once. Each machine I played would have a different score. So I, I guess I'll talk about both of those things, and then I'll, get, I'll give my number on gameplay. The first game I had, what I immediately knew was that the katana shot was great if you could hit it. Every shot was sort of clunky. The scoop was a great shot. In fact, it was my favorite shot. The scoop was my favorite shot. I could hit that thing as much as I could hit the Adams Family scoop. It was just like, you know, muscle memory, riding a bike. I could hit that scoop anytime, anytime, anytime. Same with the Wolverine shot. Could always hit it. Everything else, even when you would dial it in, had a little bit of clunk to it. And I, you know, chalked that up to, well, this is a very innovative design. It's not necessarily a fan layout. I can't expect it to be as smooth as Star Trek or anything else. But so, okay, so be it. And then, so here I'm talking about my first machine. I got to a point, shot-wise, where I started just not liking it at all. And there was something about this shot up by the Wolverine that kept getting clunky. And, and, and I'll talk about that in a, in a second. So I text one of my buddies who actually does a lot of maintenance at Tilt Pinball. And I was like, hey, man, I, I, like, I like the theme. I like the music. I like everything, well, a lot about it. It's a little clunky, but I, I'm actually not getting it. What, what's going on here? There's something about this that this doesn't feel right. And I didn't know. He's like, are you, are you kidding me? Like, that game's fantastic. How can you not like it? Like, I know what you like. This is all, this is up your alley and all that. And I'm like, okay, uh, so let's, uh, okay, I, I, I'll give it another shot. I gave it another few shots, and there just was something missing. I, I, I don't know what it was. I couldn't put my finger on it. Let's now fast forward to the second time I owned Deadpool. I owned Deadpool again because I got it at a price that I couldn't refuse. I actually got it from a guy that routes games in the cities, and I bought a uh, Star Wars and a Deadpool at once. It was better to buy both than one, so eh, a, a story for another day. So the second Deadpool I got, something was different. When I would hit the Wolverine shot in a certain way, it would ricochet off the stand-up target and go up the scoop and make this snick sound. I'm like, whoa, what is that? That feels good. And I noticed it hit the two times multiplier. Well, it turns out what was happening that on the first machine I had, I had no idea that that stand-up target would be such an important snick shot. For those uninitiated, the Wolverine shot, which is up the middle, it's kind of like a, a little loop, a half loop, half moon loop. There is a little stand-up target to the right of it angled at about, what, I guess, what would you say, 45 degrees? That if you hit that and it bounces up then the ramp to the left, which is a kind of an odd thing, it gives you a two times mul uh, play field multiplier. You hit it again, that increases. My first game, literally that shot didn't exist. I, I didn't know enough to even look for it, but I guess that stand-up target was there, but it was bashed to shit so bad that it just never registered or it never bounced off. So that was the thing that was feeling clunky and missing. And then the second game, I could hit that shot if I tried, I'd say, three out of five times. No shit. I've played others that, you know, it's a, it's a little harder than that, but that shot was, oh, okay, I see how people are getting these scores. I, I see what that is. I guess I can give this a second look, a little more attention. And we're specifically talking about Deadpool pros here. I have played premiums and LEs, and I think, would I own it again? Yes, and I would own a premium. I think that between the pro and the premium slash LE, there's enough similarities that I don't think it requires separate reviews. Other than on the premium and LEs, the, the disco shot on the left will keep feeding the right flipper. That is really the only gameplay difference. Uh, everything else is basically the same and even that gameplay difference isn't isn't super huge 
Cosmetically, I actually like the LE powder coat and everything the best, but uh, that's for, for another day. But gameplay, okay. Let's just squish the two machines together and assume I just owned it once. I would say the shots and layout, I was very, very convinced, and I wrote my review on Pinside about this, that it was a very similar rule set to Lord of the Rings in that every shot you hit was working towards something. And my only personal experience, aside from the Twilight Zone, Adam's Family, 90s, Attack from Mars era, was Star Trek, which is hit the lit shots, and Lord of the Rings, which was, oh my god, all these shots do something, whether you're in a mode or not. And Deadpool, it's like, oh, that's that's a very similar thing. There's the chimichangas, there's the katana ramps, there's the modes, which were so intuitive, so awesome. And to this day, it's, I mean, it's just Mortal Kombat in a video game, which, come on, just, just re-theme it, make it Mortal Kombat. You can probably triple your sales. Well, come to find out, oh, they're designed by the same fucking dude. And that was my first introduction into a designer actually has a major influence on how the game plays, feels, looks, all, all that. I mean, can you blame me? I, I, I was, this is my third pinball machine. I, I wasn't necessarily like when I came back to the game, oh, what I want to know more than anything, who does the artwork? Who does the software? You know, I wanted to play games and buy it, but you, you start picking up on these things the, the more you experience. And especially when you have money into something, you research it a little bit. So to suffice to say, I, I liked the rule design. Uh, I actually loved the addition of the fights, like I mentioned, the Mortal Kombat stuff. And the shots were eh, clunky. Overall, I'd give the gameplay an 8. Uh, I think the, the shots are a little clunky. There's some satisfaction in there. And the satisfaction, the, the katana shot and some of the snicket when you're aiming for it, you get yourself an 11. Uh, but there is a lot of clunk overall. Give it an 8. Rules. Rules, I think, I, I guess I just talked about them quite a bit. And the fact that the battles are great. One of the most simplest, tell someone how to do it, hit the scoop, pick a person, do a battle. You ever seen a fighting game before? Of course you had. Uh, it's just like that. It it actually reminds me of being, oh, I guess how old would I have been? Uh, 10? 11? Uh, at Molten's Skate America. Uh, in Eau Claire, that is the skating rink, you know, where you go in elementary, middle school and have your first kiss and listen to awesome 80s music. You ride the turtles, you roller skate, you play arcade games. And then one day, you and a friend see this game like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. What the hell is that? There's this big green guy with orange hair and he's full of uh, electricity. And there's this other guy in a white karate gi. He's throwing fireballs. There's these two giant health bars at the top. People just start gathering around, and, and at that age, it was like there was nothing like it. These giant sprites on the screen. Oh my god! Um, you know, welcome Street Fighter II, one of the most influential video games of all time, and clearly had an influence on you know Mortal Kombat and, and Deadpool as well. So the rules being, you know, a marriage of a love of fighting games. Uh, a very similar to Lord of the Rings, you know, shots aside, I think there's a lot to it. Uh, you know, the modes may be, you know, there's only, I guess, what, is it five or six, but then you can double them. There's many wizard modes. Um, there, I, I would, I would say that the rules are in nine. Uh, some could say 10. I just think where it doesn't get 10 is getting to Mr. Sinister or the wizard modes isn't like, as, uh, you know, there isn't much feeling, as much feeling to it as it is in, like, let's, uh, let's talk about Lord of the Rings. Valinor, it's like, in, in the story, Valinor is this thing. It's, oh my god, it makes sense. In uh, Star Trek, you know, there's the Kobayashi Maru, this unobtainable thing. This this crazy, deep, makes sense to the whole story. Deadpool? Okay. Mr. Sinish? Okay. Uh, that's not like Lex Luthor to Superman. It's not like the Joker to Batman. It's just like, all right, sure, I guess we're fighting. So, yeah, I think it's a little like, meh, meh. But, mm, that aside, the rules are a nine. Visuals. Uh, again, for those who aren't used to the way I'm reviewing, uh, games, in the visual standpoint, I'm combining both the art and the light package into one. I think... This is, uh, and I don't like saying this, 
because it this game is fantastic. It's a six. It's just so red and dark. And it's the first game I thought, like, is there is there a couple bulbs out? I had to look. No, no, they're out. Okay. What? Uh, you know, and even Lord of the Rings, that's a dark game. And this is the game I owned after, and I thought this was dark. It just didn't have that wow, like a Star Trek or, you know, now that, you know, years later, a Mandalorian or a Alien or, well, insert game you like the visuals most here, whatever. I, you know, it's not great. The back glass, all of it was just, you know, what I expect. And that's, I guess, you know, in quotes, that's what, oh, you delivered on, I guess, what I expected. Nothing more, nothing really less. And the lights, yeah, there's RGB and they're all the same. They're what I expect. Yeah, they do. They do the job. That's it. They're fine. Uh, and the, I, what I find odd is going to the premium, like the back glass, the, the translate is worse than the pro. Uh, if, I, if I got a premium again, I would switch it with the pro, which, you know, I guess I would actually do the same in, in Metallica. But anyway, visuals. I don't have much more to say on it. Six. Sorry, bro. Audio. Well, you know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself. (laughs) 10, baby. That audio, she's a 10. Not to overuse the overused, totally redeem yourself, but it did. It does. It continues to. So it is. All right. There's a score. I mean, okay, I could... Should I talk more about audio? Okay. The sound effects are fantastic. They are so many call-outs. I keep hearing ones I've never heard. They are funny. They're crass. Some are good. Some are bad in a good way. Some are good in a bad way. The music is fantastic. I've heard people put custom music in it. I don't know why. You don't need to. The music they give you is fantastic. It's 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 a 10 out of 10. I can't think of another game that has an overall audio sound package, whatever you want to call it, as good as this. Sound effects, maybe sure. Maybe some music, I'm sure. But this is this is the creme de la creme. This is the tippy tap. This, my friend, is a 10. All right, let's go through the numbers. Theme 7, Gameplay 8, Rules 9, Visuals 6, Bummer Bro, and Audio 10. With my genius level math, that is a 40 out of 50. Multiply that by 2, you got yourself an 80. B minus. Man, this... My my system is fucked. (laughs) My system doesn't work. This is, in fact, a broken system. My personal opinion on the game, ah, uh, I guess it's close here. If we just add another line to that minus, my personal opinion is a B plus. If we meet in the middle, it's a B. Who cares? System's broken. I'm going to go with my gut on this one and call it a B plus. Well, there's a review of the third game I owned, and I guess I wonder what the next game I owned was. All right, that's it. Thanks for joining me at the Pinball Party. Feel free to contact me at pinballpartypodcast.com. Questions, comments, concerns, count the number of times I say so, all that fun stuff. Thanks for listening to me talk a little bit about Spooky, a lot of Wisconsin stuff today, giving my thoughts on Deadpool, and of course, the last minute 007 news. We'll talk more about that next week. Speaking of next week, I hope to see you here and see you here with my ears, my voice, your ears, whatever. Thanks again. Always appreciate it. Take care. See ya.